Okay, th good afternoon and thank you very much all of you who have already joined. And uh, basically our webinar course, uh, our basic of wireless networking and uh, also basics of uh, uh, server configuration. Uh, today our instructor engineer MD Mahdi Hassan, uh, network engineer, ICT Cell University of Dhaka. Uh, Mr. Mahadi Hassan has uh, been working in this uh, networking area for over 14 years in various reputed organizations in the ICT sector. Currently, he is working as a network engineer in the ICT cell of the University of Dhaka. Uh, previously, he uh, held various roles, including senior system engineer and technical specialist at Bangladesh Research and Education Network, BDN, and played a special role in, uh, in implementing BDN's core technical infrastructure and in different university. He launched the educational roaming service EduRAM in Bangladesh and also worked on implementing identity and access management, IAM for the education community. He completed his master's in computer science from Zanginagar University and bachelor of science in computer science from uh, BUBT. He also conducts national and international training and workshop as a trainer. Furthermore, he has received internship from Ornet USA and Nordunet, uh, Sweden, and attended many training and workshop at home and abroad. So I think uh, he is uh, very much experienced in this networking area. Uh, so today, just one session he will conduct and uh, more two course he will also conduct, network management and network monitoring. So now I would like to request uh, Mehdi Hassan to conduct today's seminar webinar course sorry today webinar course uh, mehdi you can now continue thank you sir so my voice is clear yes clear okay now i'm sharing my screen Welcome everyone, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Now I'm working as a network engineer in University of Dhaka. So today our topics is Linux system administration. So it's a very big topics and it's quite impossible to uh, give uh, abstract summary in two, two hours because it's required at least 10 hours and more for the basic discussion. So I, I'll try my level best uh, to give you an abstract idea and some uh, practical overview uh, regarding Linux system administration. So now starting. So first question is what is the system administration? System administration actually it's related to every sector in the IT. So if you uh, think about the organization in the organization, uh, most of the organization today are using the IT services and uh, all the services uh, like uh, networking service and we are using uh, customized application, website, email services. So all the services are managed by the system administrator. So there is a two part. One part is a development. So developers are involved uh, developing various application customized software and after that uh, the delivery uh, of from the developers, system administrator can responsible everything, operation, maintenance, upgradation, time-to-time -time backup, everything. So if you look into this diagram, this is a very basic diagram for a organization internal IT system. So here you look uh, some network devices, some client devices, or some server devices, uh, in this diagram. So every sector is in every sectors. Designation is quite different, but all are, are under the system administration, managing networking, managing server infrastructure, managing IT environment, everything is under system administration. So who are the system administrators? So this kind of responsibility maintains by the uh, people is called system administrator. Uh, mainly, uh, they are maintain local IT infrastructure, hardware, software, network devices. 
configuration management and documentation. They are also responsible for monitor uptime of their infrastructure performance and utilization. Another important thing is user management and apply security policy schedule backup. This is very important part. If you have backup, then you can ensure anything. And if you don't have backup, there is no way to recover data and system updation. Uh, some are claiming uh, they are uh, not listening me clear. Is it okay for a, all of you? Okay. Uh, I think need little bit loud. If... Okay, sir. So now I am going to discuss about the our main topics Linux system administration. So Linux system administration is a little bit part of the whole IT system. It's mainly used for uh, managing server infrastructure and hosting application. Application like we are now using uh, various web application. So we need web server for running the web application. Uh, we are using mail server, mail, mail application. That is also host by the maximum uh, Linux. And uh, today market share is 90% plus web application are hosted in Linux environment. That's why it's a very important for every IT professional and IT student to learn about this system. Uh, if you look into the system, uh, today uh, some word is very uh, common for us. This is cloud, DevOps, um, many things, microservice, and all of are actually running under the Linux system. So I'm going to discuss about what is actually Linux. Linux mainly a application, the core application of the operating system. It is not the operating system. It is the main application of the operating system. So, and if you look into the picture, it's provide like the opportunity like this. It's provide the ingredients, it's provide the recipe, and we have to make our food as like our choice. So no other operating system provide uh, this kind of opportunity. If you are, uh, I'm going to talking about win, uh, Windows, Windows, all of the source code are compiled by Windows and there is no way to edit any application provided by the Microsoft Windows. But all of the code publicly open in the internet and you can download it, modify as you want and compile it as per your requirement. So it's developed by uh, developed by a university student, Nina Storvandos, uh, using language C in the 1991. Uh, it's become an operating system when uh, we bundle with some other system tools, application, and release it. Uh, this, that is called also distribution. So we are using a Linux-like operating system. That's actually called a distribution. You may. Uh, know about uh, Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu, Debian. So all of our for Linux distribution. This is not a Linux operating system. This is Linux based operating system. And Linux is only the main application of this operating system. So all of the distribution collect the kernel program for Linux and bundle with some other uh, system tools, system application, compiler, that is also comes from uh, comes from many uh, open source of uh, program. You know about the GNU project. Uh, they they uh, they provide uh, compiler for different languages for C C plus plus, and they also provide various uh, open source software like uh, for the desktop uh, environment in Linux. We use GNU uh, Genome Desktop Platform, just like that. So here is a link, distrowas.com. If you are interested more about the various Linux distribution, then you will find from this link. Uh, it's listed almost uh, 1,000 plus uh, various Linux distribution. So why it is popular? These are the reason for the, some I discuss about the some popular feature of Linux. 
it is portable portable means it run all of the hardware so right now uh, most of the operating system are portable but one operating system uh, as i mentioned mac uh, mac operating system you, you don't able to install uh, any laptop and mac operating system it's required only mac uh, hardware by provided by the apple to run mac operating system but other operating system like microsoft windows linux it's run any kind of hardware platform so linux also portable operating system and most important things is it is open source open source means it's kernel source code other utility application source code everything are open in the internet if you want then you can download from the internet you can edit as you want and compile and deploy in your system it support multi programming for day one when it's introduced and multi user uh, important thing is that there is a difference between multi programming and multi user some of our mix up uh, these two things multi programming provide run multiple programs simultaneously and multi user these are provide multiple user can log in at the same time the system and working separately in the same system so in that case if i going to uh, if i uh, talking about uh, microsoft windows if you uh, log in to the windows system and someone try to log in via remote desktop so you can kick out they log out you and remote user can log in but in the linux system multiple user can log in simultaneously and run multiple program at the same time another important thing is security so it's very much stable and very much secure because its source code is open and a large number of community always analyzes the source code of linux kernel if anything found anomalies like any anti virus threat security hole they can report it immediately uh, and, and a number of people working to develop and fix up this so any security is found in linux it's fixed up within one and two days or in a week but if i'm talking about other system they only they are paid engineer working on it and any security is fixed by their own engineers another thing is command line interface so some people don't like working in command line but this is provide huge opportunity to manage old it infrastructure for the system administrator i'm if i am talking about the graphical user interface and command line interface if i have to create 10 user then i have to open a uh, interface for creating user i have to provide username i have to provide the user address and i have to provide user email address i have to provide user password in different form and submit create user button for create a single user but in command line interface there are lots of option to create a script or run a single command to creating multiple users simultaneously and this is a single example there are lots of example uh, here for difference between cli and graphical user interface for the system administration purpose it provide huge opportunity to reuse as like programming code we most of our professional system administrator we have template for different purpose or we just change the particular field and run this script and the operation is done but in the graphical user interface i have to open the interface i have to put some data and i have to click okay or click next then it will be okay so it consume more time more interaction than cli that's why cli and nowadays windows also provide the powershell to manage everything for the windows system in command line interface and this is the internal architecture of a linux based system so in the bottom line this is our 
hardware resources like CPU, RAM, and input output device like uh, keyboard, mouse, hard disk. Uh, on top of that, the Linux defense module actually kernel, uh, not a single program, kernel contains many modules for different purpose. And then kernel application, and system library for different perspective. Suppose if you run to a application that using PSP library that you have to provide PSP library for that application. If you want to run a database application, you have to provide the MySQL library for that application. So in the layer of system library, it's sold a different library application. And on top of that, all the uh, system software, user process, user utilities, and copilot. So, this is actually theoretical part. I tried make it very simple and very short time because I want to show you some practical thing in lab. That's why I make it as much as simple and as much as short. So if you have any question uh, regarding this, you may uh, type in chat box. Either I'll go for showing the lab, how to install in your local environment and how to run uh, various application in your local lab. Have you any question regarding Linux system? Mm. I think so far no question, but one uh, participant raised raise his hand. Yes. Russell Madbar. Do you have any question? Okay, I think uh, he, he has long time ago raised his hand. Okay. I asked him any question. I think you can uh, go to next. Okay, for for the lab, uh, there is a lots of open source application, and another thing is virtualization that is actually. Uh, blessing for us because uh, for the virtualization, I have the opportunity to run everything in my local environment. And that provides as like as real fields because it's not simulator. It's provide run real operating system, real application in the virtual environment in my local system because there is no load actually. So if I need to run a mail application, if I run a uh, web application, and also if I want to uh, run a cloud environment, that is also possible run in my local environment because my my hardware capacities, I am using a laptop, it's uh, contain a eight core CPU and 20 GB of RAM. So uh, easily I'm able to run simultaneously four, four to six server and uh, creating virtual network in between them and can test any application in my, system so i hope nowadays uh, most of the user are using the, the device uh, the configuration is very high almost all of the laptop comes with at least 4 gb ram 4 core cpu so you may very easily run one or two server in your system and check any application for the practice purpose for the learning purpose in your local environment so now i am showing how to do that So for the lab purpose, I'm using a virtualization software. It's named VirtualBox, Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, you may download it from internet, just search name, VirtualBox, and you'll find the search result. Click on download. And depending on hardware, you may download for what most of the user right now are using Windows. So that's why I click Windows host. If you use another platform like Mac OS, then click here. This provide for Mac OS X. So now I'm using Windows. That's why I download for Windows system. Uh, this is around 100 megabyte software and depending on your internet speed, it's to uh, 5 to 10 minutes maximum. 
in my case, it's equal to two or three minutes. And you have to download another software application that is actually operating system is come with name iso so depend on which platform you actually which distribution you actually choose if i if you want to run ubuntu then you have to download ubuntu iso file just search with ubuntu iso file download and it give you the download link I just click here is download the latest ubuntu image 22.4 lds but it's quite large it's almost 3.6 gb that's why it's taking more time so i have all the iso in my local hard disk that's why i am not going to download it and i also give you all the iso download link in a notepad file so you use it later if you want to use red hat then charge red hat from the red hat.com website they can provide the iso because red hat is a commercial version of linux uh, it's operating system is t but uh, you have to purchase their service but they can provide use it free for the developer so you have to create a developer license so from the red hat website you have to create in a uh, developers menu and from here you can get the option to download so at first you have to log in if you click on login uh, we have the account before then you may able to log in either you have to create a account it's a free so register for red hat account and fill up this form in my case i have already the account in red hat developer portal Sorry, it's my common problem to forget password every time. I hope there is an option to social login. Try with that. Sign up. I have already the account.
okay no problem better to create a new account you can also use red hat similar like operating system that is also clone from red hat main uh, source code there are two distribution one is called alma linux and another one is rocky linux both are enterprise grade operating system. Enterprise grade means that are used for the host application uh, in enterprise level, like a large organization uh, that need more scalability, more stability, and high ability. So you may download from here also. They provide a uh, different version. Uh, this is for uh, 64 bit, 8664 bit. So there is a download option for the torrent also. And download from here. So you may choose uh, the mirror links from Bangladesh. So there are different version. One is for boot ISO. Boot ISO means that's just for the booting and all the software application installs for, from the internet. Uh, another one is DVD ISO that is include all the software with this ISO. But size is very much different. So boot ISO in uh, less than one uh, gigabyte and full dvd iso is more than around 8 gigabyte so for our case uh, we at least the minimum iso this one uh, this is also 1.4 gigabyte So my virtual box application already download, just double click on this application. 
क्लिक यस इट स्टार्ट टू इनस्टलेशन वेरी सिमिलर टू इनस्टॉल अदर सॉफ्टवेयर इन विंडोज जस्ट क्लिक नेक्स्ट 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 एंड यस एंड फिनिश And you could select uh, this option, start Oracle virtual box, and then click finish. Then it's open that application. So I, I regularly use it. That's why some uh, virtual machine already created in my environment. Uh, if you new login then you can find uh, like this so i remove all the previously installed virtual machine and uh, today course is very important because i have another two course uh next next week and after the next week network monitoring and management and in these two course is highly required today's course because on on two courses I, I never show the how to install operating system how to install linux how to ppl lab i just start from the how to manage the network and how to install that network management tools from that point so today course is key because it for for who's are want to join another two courses to uh, and uh, yeah, next week and uh, after the next week so after the installation and open this application you find this windows like this uh, this is the actually welcome scheme for the oracle virtual box so at first you have to create a virtual machine virtual machine at means this is actually run the whole operating system under the your host operating system in that case host operating system means this operating system i am actually using used to run this application virtual box application and another announcement is that uh, after today's session you have a uh, short exam at least uh, 10 mcq question and all the question actually set from this lecture sheet so you have to give your concentration and the lab also to answer all the question so in this case there is a two terms one is virtual machine virtual machine means running the running an operating system under another operating system so another operating system is host in that case the windows 11 i am using for my device this windows 11 actually called host machine and the virtual machine is i run under the virtual box application that is called guest system and my windows is host system keep in mind so at first i have to create a virtual machine to do that, uh, there is two options. Another one is to uh, click on this new button. Another one is from the menu bar, click machine and click on new. If on the same pop-up for both. So at first you have to set uh, the virtual machine name. In that case, you have to a meaningful name because naming, naming convention is very important to understand later 
suppose I said the name PM1. So it no, it doesn't make sense that it is running Windows or Linux. But if I said this name, suppose in the in this lab I use Alma Linux version nine and sixty-four bit. So by the name of virtual machine. I can understand uh, this is actually running a virtual machine with operating system Alma Linux version 9 and it's 64 bit. So before start that you have to verify another option. The virtualization feature is enabled in your host or not. To do that you have to run the tax manager application in host operating system. This is tax manager. You have to click on performance and click on CPU. And if you see the virtualization is enabled, then it's capable to run virtual machine in this host in this environment. Either you have to enable it from the BIOS. I hope all of you know about the BIOS and how to open it. So you have to enable virtualization technology to run virtual operating system in your environment. And from, from here, you also found the information about how many CPU core you have. In that case, uh, physical core is four and logical processor is eight. So I have eight virtual CPU. Another option is memory. Memory is actually represent the RAM we know about this actually uh, we are about that by name jam but this is use terms memory so in that case i have installed me memory around four gigabyte and use it's only 9.7 gigabyte so i have used free space so People creating virtual machine run virtual operating system, you have to verify that. So in that case, I give the name Alma Linux 964-bit and select where actually store this virtual machine. So in that case, the default location is uh, user's home directory. It's create a special folder with name virtual box VMs. And the type automatically set because I provide the name Alma Linux when it's automatically set the type Linux and version Linux 2.6, 3.4 and later. Then click next. From here, you have to set the memory. Memory means RAM. It's not represent hard disk storage. Hard disk storage uh, actually identifies the name storage. Uh, memory they are actually identified by memory. So I have huge amount of memory free. That's why I give here four gigabyte of RAM for this virtual machine. And then click next. From this option, you have to create a virtual hard disk. To store operating system data. So in that case, actually, I have to select uh, the create a virtual disk now. And from here, you have nothing to change. Just click next. Uh, this is for the same. Uh, nothing to change. I just explain here. Dynamically allocated means if you select the hard disk size fifty GB. And uh, your operating system uh, took only uh, 5 GB. So the space consume only 5 GB in, from your post hard disk. But if you select the peak size, so all the 50 GB data consume for your post hard disk. So post hard disk means my host operating system disk. 
so i click the dynamically allocated and select the size for the hard disk so 20 gb is mass enough for testing all kind of service uh, as you want you may set uh, the more size 50 gb 100 gb there is no problem because i select the dynamically allocated it's increasing sequentially so in my case for two days lab and for another two session i need only 20 gb that's enough for me i click create the virtual machine is created but if i am going to start this machine start mean power on so this is actually looking for boot disks because it's newly created and no operating system actually installed so I have to change some more setting this virtual machine before start. So right now, I give power of this machine command and click on setting. So click system tab and from the boot order, uncheck the copy because no one can today uh, not going to use floppy disks and click on cpu uh, this is by default select only single cpu but i want to increase it to number four in your case if your host operating system run with only four cpu never set here all the four cpu in, in this step so before select this verify from tax manager how many cpu you have and the utilization of your cpu total cpu utilization in my case is total cpu utilization is 50 to 60 percent and sometimes is very low lower than 50 percent so that's why i select four cpu in your case it's, it's possible to run this virtual machine with single cpu so for the faster installation because i have very tight schedule with you and i have to show you many things that's why i select a uh, number of cpu 4 and select around 4 gigabyte of ram and after that click on storage so there is only hard disk created but we have no cd drive cd file because i have to install from a bootable media so that's why I click on the, this empty disk icon and from the right side disk icon choose a disk file click and from where you download actually your iso file in my case I download the Alma Linux 9 in the download folder. That's why I click on download folder and select the ISO file and click open and click OK. So I have to configure another thing also. If I want to internet enable my virtual machine, in that case, I have to select a network adapter by default one adapter is selected and enabled and it is net mode uh, and net mode adapter cannot be accessible from the host operating system so if i want to access this virtual server from my host operating system i have to select another network adapter enable it and set the mode to host only adapter so one is net mode that is actually provide internet for this server and another one is 
पोस्ट ऑन लेयर अपटर देन क्लिक ओके नाउ स्टार्ट दिस वर्चुअल मशीन another window is open from here at first you have to select there is two option to install one option is install alma linux 9 another option test this media and install alma linux this is actually uh, verified full iso file 8 gb iso file it's took more time that's why i'm select first one install alma linux 9 and type enter So this is the welcome screen to install this operating system. So from the language selection, I select English and English United States, then click next. Um, this is the various setup menu. At first, we have to click on network and host name and verify both the, both the adapter is connected or not this this is actually uh, represent the connection status uh, if it is gray then it is not connected and it is enable is showing uh, it is connected so check for the both one is number three another one is number eight then click done after that uh, this is very important thing in installation destination this is actually disk partitioning and if you are going to install in your physical system physical system in in the hard uh, desktop or laptop you have to very careful about this configuration because it by default configuration is automatically configure the hard disk so if your hard disk is 100 db or 100 uh, gigabyte or one terabyte it's completely erase all data and format all the partition and creates only the partition required to install this operating system that's why you have to be very careful about that so if you want in that case you, we are install it a virtual environment that's why uh, I don't have any uh, issue uh, about the hard disk formation because this hard disk actually virtual hard disk and, and uh, there is no data actually that's why it's automatic uh, disk uh, partitioning is okay for me but when you are uh, deployed a physical server or physical machine on that time you have to select uh, the custom and click done then this is actually show uh, how much storage is available uh, for doing partition and total space. So in that case, the total space is 20 gigabyte and available space only 20 gigabytes. So I have to create partition. So from the plus icon, I have to create at first slash boot partition and the size width. one gigabyte so one gigabyte boot partition created i need to create another partition uh, this is actually swap partition and um, this size is actually uh, this is uh, this uh, memory actually not used by uh, stored data this is actually used by the ram when RAM is full, then uh, it's expand to swap area. That's why 2GB is enough. 
for this environment and the production environment we set it 8 gb to 16 db depending on uh, how much data actually i have in my server so in that case i set uh, 2 gigabyte of swap and another mandatory partition is flash so i i don't provide any size data because i want to uh, i want uh, this partition actually use the full available space that's why i i, I don't set any uh, data capacity just click add mount point loops it took all the 17 gigabyte of free space then click done so this free partition is good enough to run linux operating system and then click uh, the software selection uh, this is actually very important part if you want to your server with graphical user interface then uh, select uh, the server with a graphical user interface interface but it's consume more memory more storage and affect the performance of the whole system that's why we always recommend select uh, the minimum installation that is actually install the only basic functionalities and from the right menu i select some mandatory tools like system tools security tools that is very essential and standard tools another one is yeah, development tools so standard development tools security tools and system tools only four category of package install with with this selection minimum installation but if you uh, select the graphical user interface additionally it's in, install the application for run a desktop environment so if you want to see the look and feel of the uh, desktop environment of linux then you have to select this option server with graphical user interface and from the right side uh, you have to select the same tools security tools system tools uh, development tools and if you want you can select a debugging tool so to show you look and feel for the graphics environment i select server with graphical user interface but my recommendation is always install minimum with the selection of minimum installation option and select the same tools and finally you have to set root password root password means uh, this is actually administrator user of the linux environment we know in the windows system there is a default user with name administrator as like same in the linux environment administrator user with name root so i put a password here For the lab environment, I select a uh, six digit password only. But for the production environment, always keep in mind we configure Linux for the production level application. The maximum application are running uh, connected with internet. That's why we have to keep in mind every section uh, on the time of provide password. We have to set very strong password every time. then click down and click begin installation so it took around 10 to 15 minutes complete this task so now you have any question you may ask in chat box or raise your hand to ask verbally because it take at least 10 minutes so this 10 minutes actually i have nothing to do so i am ready to answer your question
Okay, very good question. Why do you select Alma Linux? Alma Linux, in that case, I was saying about that, Linux have various distribution, but one is very much stable and it's called enterprise grade operating system. This is Red Hat Linux. Um, worldwide, all the enterprise infrastructure used by uh, Red Hat Linux. Um, for use Red Hat Linux, you have to purchase their license for the support. Without purchasing license, you are not able to use this. That's why I select Alma Linux. I also told about alternative distribution, Rocky Linux. Both are copy from the Red Hat. So you only don't receive support from the Red Hat, but you can get the stability, uh, the performance, everything almost same like with Red Hat Linux, because this is the clone copy of source code from the Red Hat Linux and change the signature and other things and add some extra feature with the Red Hat Linux and release the name with Alma, Alma Linux. Before last year, uh, there was another distribution with name CentOS. That was also very popular distribution, but Red Hat acquired it. Um, now it is maintained for the development purpose of Red Hat. So Red, it's maintained lifecycle like that. At first, a PISA deploy on the Fedora Linux. So Fedora user community use, use it and report the bug and others test performance. After that, it's deployed in CentOS system and release Red Hat Linux. And after release the Red Hat Linux, Rocky and Alma Linux collect the code from Red Hat and release their own operating system. Any other question? Yes, maybe another question. Yes, yes. This is also very intelligent and important question. Why need two network adapter? Can I configure one adapter or series mode? So in that case, I am using my laptop and my laptop is a portable device. Now I am in my home, I am connected with my home router. But when I am in my office, I am connected with my office network. So if I use bridge network connectivity, my virtual machine also will connect with the where I am staying. When I am staying my home, my virtual machine also connected with my home router. When I am in my office, my virtual machine also going to connect with my office network. So every time it sends the network configuration. In my laptop, this is a static device. So I need only browsing purpose and internet connectivity. But in virtual machine, I creating is for the use server purpose. So for the server purpose, I need a static IP always. Also, I need internet connectivity in the virtual machine because maximum software I have to install from the internet. So I need both functionality. One is internet connectivity. That's why I create a adapter net. And in virtual box, there is no option to connect a net adapter IP address from the host machine. That's why I have to connect this virtual machine with my host machine because I have to copy paste command. So it's provide very much flexibility when I connect the server with Putty software or any other SSS client software. Another one is suppose some of the service I want to test from my host machine. Suppose I create a web server and I want to browse this web server from my laptop.
That's why I see a two adapter. Sorry, uh, uh, maybe uh, some noise creating from my one uh, from one of our panelists. Okay, some other dish to like Kali. Kali actually designed for the security purpose. Security purpose means uh, most of the security testing tools bundle with the Kali already installed, but you, you are able to install all the Kali security tools, others distribution, but for the novice, uh, this is quite difficult to install all of the tools uh, in others like Ubuntu and Kali also based on Debian based system and run on top of Ubuntu. So you found the all flavor of Ubuntu and all the security tools installed on Kali. No, server waste from anywhere, uh, this is not true because you are in a virtual environment. That's why uh, this provides the connectivity under your host machine only. So another virtual machine run your host uh, that's able to connect your, because this is host only network. So all the communication in between your host. Okay, you many person asks about uh, the distribution. I'm answering with uh, some other presentation. So let's track, uh, talk about distribution. So there is different type of distribution. Some call is original distribution. Original distribution means uh, it's collect uh, the Linux kernel from the provider of Linux kernel, the GNU utilities, and the others additional uh, open source software. And they create uh, their own package manager, package manager, means uh, provide the functionalities of install software, uninstall software, update software. This is called actually package manager. And this distribution actually original distribution. This is called original Linux distro, like Red Hat Linux, Debian, Arc Linux, SUSE. Those are the original Linux distribution. And others call derivatives distribution or forks distribution like Ubuntu, Kali, CentOS, Alma, Rocky. That's a derivative distribution like they copy the original distribution and add some additional software. This is called actually derivative distribution. Ubuntu also derivative distribution. Uh, it's called uh, the original distro Debian and add some additional software then it's release. Kali also same, CentOS. And another distribution called flavors. Flavors means it's collect from original distribution and derivative distribution. You may know about the Linux Mint. Linux Mint provide the same flavor of Ubuntu and also provide the flavor of Debian. I hope uh, you know about the Zorin OS, elementary OS. Those three are the same. This collect some features from Ubuntu and some features, original features from the Debian. Then release. I hope now you are more clear.
any other question just feel free to ask me of course i, I will share the presentation slide with you Uh, someone asks how many to ask on these topics. Uh, I'm sorry to say uh, today class is the last class for these topics, but our another two courses actually use uh, this system to deploy uh, those applications for the network monitoring and management purpose. Next week, um, after the next week, uh, maybe. Uh, two session with uh, network monitoring one one is network monitoring another one is uh, network management that's two session actually use uh, this linux server for deploy uh, those application Uh, to send receive data, you have to use SFTP. Either you have to configure FTP server, and another option uh, directly uh, copy paste from host to VM. Uh, but to do that, you have to install. Uh, in that case, I am using VirtualBox. So you have to install VirtualBox plugin in the guest operating system after that yeah, if you enable the share and copy paste by directional uh, there is an option to share folder share clipboard and dra drag and drop so if you enable the bi directional drag and drop then yeah, in the graphics mode you can just select a uh, file or folder uh, file or folder from the guest operating system drag it uh, to the host operating system. But to do that, you have to install a plugins. Yes, host only adapter uh, main purpose is communicate host to guest, guest to host. Uh, this is actually purpose of uh, the bidirectional copy paste, drag and drop file sharing. Paste edition CD actually provides this uh, that's plugins.
ओके स्टेकिंग फूड टाइम या इन द मीन टाइम इस बेटर वी डिस्कस सम इंटरनल व्यू ऑफ लिनक्स बिकॉज इट विल रिक्वायर्ड बिफोर गोइंग टू कमांड लाइन वर्किंग no it is not possible uh, browse virtual machine by the net because uh, this is only for the uh, oracle virtual box but if you use vmr workstation vmr workstation can support uh, you may communicate with net adapter with the host and guest operating system but but oracle virtual box uh it's not support communicate host and guest with the net adapter the net adapter only used for the connect internet uh, which plugins plugins means uh there is a software called guest edition uh, this is actually this plugins uh, provide by directional copy auto resize uh, display regulation i i'll show you after finish the installation i'll show you okay uh, our installation is complete so i have to click on the reboot system after reboot we are able to log in this system or about job field in linux system administration actually uh, any field of it if you are programmer if you are developer if you are network engineer in the in the each and every field required linux knowledge without required knowledge you are not complete you are not complete developer you are not complete network engineer you are not complete anything without knowledge of uh, linux system administration because almost in the fd is an fd sector it seems oh sorry uh, i forgot to dis describe that so after reboot you, you will find uh, this window from this window, uh, you have to scrolling and start setup. Click on the start setup. So regarding privacy, so nothing to do. Just click next. Uh, from the online connect, same. I want to skip it. Um, in this sector, this is for only graphical uh, graphical interface. I have to create a user actually. So provide the full name of user. In that case, I provide my name Mohammed Mehdi Hassan and select the user username means login name I want to a small name here only Mehdi and then click next and I have to set the password for this user okay finish so this is actually uh, the desktop environment of a Linux operating system. So if you click on the activities, this is actually show the menu. But in that case, uh, the display is not automatically resizing. So this software already makes maximum mode 
but it's showing a very little area of my desktop so to do that so maximize other graphics and display resolution uh, drag and drop copy i have to install another application so from the menu bar click on device and click insert guest edition cd news see again and after that we found a software want to run in your server so i can run it from here and it asks for my password again because it's going to change in the system Uh, this question I already answered. Ubuntu is a development operating system, but Ubuntu also has the very much stability. But Red Hat actually a trademark of enterprise grade operating system. So all the enterprise grade application actually have to run based on Red Hat. So if you want to use Ubuntu, there is no issue actually. But Ubuntu has many version, uh, latest version. So if you want to use Ubuntu, obviously you have to use the LTS version, long-term evolution version, long-term support version you have to use if you want to use Ubuntu. taking some time because it is uh, modifying the kernel so it's done it's asking to press return to close this windows okay so I have to give a reboot. For the reboot, uh, the command is reboot, but I now I am a normal user. That's why I have to add this additional option before the command sudo. Uh, this is actually provide uh, the privilege for the normal user. So look now it is automatically resizing its display resolution if i resize the main application size it is also resize the display size of the guest operating system so my plugins is working uh, now it is also possible to drag and drop copy drag and drop means suppose i want to transfer this file from my host machine to this machine but still it's showing not permit so to do that 
dag and drop so already by direction all selected okay or disable clipboard then I'll copy it Yes, we got another restart. It's not working, but this plugin already installed. So I skip this thing because if I am going to troubleshooting this option uh, over the time and uh, we tend to discuss uh, the main topics. So for the sh showing information about the networking, the command is zip config or IP address. So then it provides the network information how many adapters right now connected or is the IP address. So I connect two adapter. One is NAT adapter. This is actually NAT adapter and loops. From my command line, if I try to ping the IP address of the adapter connect with NAT, then okay. So I am getting request timeout. Um, if I ping to the adapter connect with host only interface. This is actually host only interface 192 168 56 dot 15. So that's why that is the reason I create two interface. So if I want to connect this server from remote terminal like SSH protocol. So in the in this server, remotely I log in to the server I right now installed. So I said Linux 
provide the multi user facility from the day one. So one user is directly login with graphical user interface. Another one is remotely login from Windows terminal. And it is also possible to use uh, some SSH client software. The PuTTY is the very common software used by the most of the system administrator. So I provide my IP, accept username. So three users are simultaneously connected. This is also possible. Right now, if I run this server with a public IP and I give the credential to you, you also able to connect this server from your computer. But I am run this system in local environment. That's why it is not possible. But looks, I log into the same server from three different option these two are cli terminal r1 is direct graphical user interface so now i'm talking about some uh, basic command that's we actually every time required to handle this system so first we need to know about this if i log in a windows system what is my default location? My default location is that I am staying the desktop. Where is the desktop location? If I am going to explore, see, user, then username, and there is a folder with name desktop. And it looks the same content in my desktop and under this folder. So what is for the Linux? When I'm logging in a Linux system, what is my default location? Anyone able to answer? Someone answer for the Windows, thank you. I want to pull, pull location not home you are wrong okay someone give the command thank you this command actually display the location but your answer is wrong home is not a location after user login located so the command is pwd present working directory and the location is the user home directory base directory or check if the base directory is home and present working directory the same name directory of the user this is the user home directory after login by default or suppose i'm going to bar log this is the process of change directory cd is the command for changing directory and you have to put the location every time uh, where you want to go so i want to go bar log and if i want to show the full path of my location then i have to put command pwd now i am in bar log so if I give the only CD command, again, I go to my home directory. And in that case, the username was maybe, that's why I'm going to slash home slash maybe. If username was other thing, suppose if I switch user to root, SU. I have to put the root password. So right now, I become a root user. But still now, my present working directory is slash home slash maybe. But 
but if i put the cd command change my directory to slash root because uh, this is the default uh, default home directory of administrator user So here I show uh, documented almost every step how to create virtual machine, how to install virtual machine, but it's below version. Uh, but uh, maybe if you want to install, because I show you and you have the uh, recorded how to install version 9 and I give you document how to install version 7. So at the same time, you get the how to install two version. It's an every step uh, I tried to point out. So this is the main important things to learn Linux because this is the hierarchical file system. And most of the time we have to working in command line interface. So we have to recognize the pool file system and this is the default file system and it's not like others operating system like windows file system because we know in windows system this start with a drive leader so every partition has a different drive leader suppose c drive d drive e drive but in linux based system it's a good hierarchical file system, everything under the notation of forward slash. So this is the highest level of the Linux file system. And if you create four or five partition, this is no matter, every partition located under this file system. And these directory are automatically created used by the system. So very shortly I describe the is system under the slash first one is a bin bin actually contain the binary program we use command suppose already i show you i use some command cd pwd so where it is located actually this command this command actually located under the bin directory but this is actually link directory with usr bin bin and sbin actually contain the command but both are linked with usr bin so if i want to see the location of uh, cd command or pwd command then for any command location of any command you have to type which command name so looks it's showing usr bin cd but this is also available in to see a content of a directory you have to use ls command bin cd looks so if i show in details and bin so bin directory is a virtual link directory. So link with USR bin. So content of USR bin have been almost similar because bin and USR bin is linked. So original location is USR bin and it's linked with bin. And the boot directory, boot directory contain the main program of Linux operating system, Linux kernel. So when we are start this operating system, when we start uh, this virtual machine, this is actually run the init, init program and this program actually located under the boot. That's why boot partition always out of the 
LVM partition. And then dev, dev means uh, this short form of device, all the device configuration file, suppose uh, device driver, device description, all the device related, hardware related file located under dev slash dev directory. And etc, etc contain all that static configuration file, that file are not uh, updated frequently. Suppose uh, I'm going to configure a web server. So web server configuration file is stored under the etc based on the software you want to use. If you want to use Nginx, so that it is the, uh, it will be the location etc Nginx. If you use Apache, then it location, it's also depend on uh, distribution uh, under Red Hat, uh, the Apache web uh, direct uh, web server configuration directories, etc, httpd. If you use uh, Debian based system, then it will be etc, Apache 2. It's depend on distribution, but all the application configuration, static configuration file under etc directory. Uh, home directory, this is actually for the user home directory, accept root. Root is a default administrative user that's located under slash, slash root, but other normal user always located under the home directory. That is actually default user home directory, but there is an option. If you want, you can change the home directory of any user. Then run, run actually contain the running service. Uh, suppose you want to run any service. So runtime service file contain under the run directory. Suppose I want to run a web server. Then web server uh, required some uh, configuration file uh, uh, on running time. That's file actually located under run directory. It's been actually contained the privilege command. That's command actually run the all user. Suppose in that case, I am a root user. How can I figure out root user with the name? No, this is actually figure out by the which privilege I got by the symbol of the last sign. If it is hash, then I got the full privilege. And if it is hash, uh, it is dollar sign, then I am a normal user. So now I am getting hash, that means I am administrative user. I have full administration privilege. So if I run add user command, it's used for the create user. And also, I log in from another terminal, add user, showing but user wants permission denied because normal user don't have the permission to run this command. So, some special command that actually run only run by privilege user, those commands are located under SBIM. So this, these are the command actually located under SBIM directory. Some command are located uh, both directory, SBIM and BIM, but only administrative command located under the SBIM directory. TMP, that's actually contain uh, the temporary file at the time of the run uh, system after rebooting this file actually deleted and uh, usr means unix system resource that is actually contain the main file command uh, some uh, third party software location either usr local actually uh, use for the uh, store uh, third party data temp are the same as uh, bar tem this is also a uh, link link file and i already said about pin and as well then bar bar actually uh, used for variable data like those data are increasing every time suppose a website 
suppose emails are but always mail incoming and outgoing are happen so those kind of data that's actually change every time dynamically change this bar actually used for store that kind of data like web server data web for the web service uh, it's used bar ww html uh, for the dns service it is location bar name d for the mail service is used bar school mail as like so this is actually the hierarchical file system description and some important thing is that in the hierarchical file system everything treat as a file directory i mean folder file both are treated as a file but difference is that directory contains others file and directory and file only contain the content file can contain any file other file or directory that is the actually difference and it is already i discussed about this uh, file and directory can be owned by the user to enforce security and privilege so all the file and directory if i give the command so this file are actually created under this root directory so all the directory owned by root and root by root so actually it's required more time to explain each and every topics and this is not possible to discuss everything in a single class i just give you a overview idea so this is actually a different window if i install with a graphical user interface then i will get uh, window like this you already see and if i install only minimum installer only uh, cli mode then i will get the login uh, login page like this and this is the option how can i figure out uh, what is my privilege if i get uh, the dollar sign then i am a normal user this is called normal mode and if i get uh, the hash sign then i am a privileged user and this is called admin mode so there are lots of command uh, you have to need the privilege mode to run that program and there is another way i already used and show you uh, in normal user can run a privilege command with a special permission it's called sudo but by default it's not configured only configured for the user when you, uh, it's created when you installation but others user suppose I create a user, add user, user one, user, I add user, user, and give password, user, so with other terminal, I switch this user, user, So this user countable to run sudo command. But this user able to run sudo command. user to already created and if you want to verify you have sudo permission or not so you have to run this command sudo space minus l so i already show you some command but linux command lots of questions Oh, it's already answered. No, normal user can add user with sudo command. Already I show you. But 
it's required the pseudo permission but all user don't have the pseudo permission so this is the syntax of linux command linux command not all command but linux command has three part first one is command actually command represent which will be execute then most of the command has some option and value of the option this is called actually argument suppose uh, you want to create a user so add user is a command but username is the argument you have to provide the user term either how can i figure out uh, how I, I create which user so add user username then define i want to create a user with this name and this command also very many options like i want to create a user with different location as a home directory i want to create a user but don't want to uh, take the user cli access they can access on the email ftp other service but they don't have right to access cli mode command line interface or graphics graphics interface like uh, this this command ls ls command actually use for show the content display the content of the directory but if i add some option then it's showing a tabular format and displaying the other parameter like the permission field ownership information modification date and if i want to show hidden file also then i have to put another option so there is two way i can put the option by space individually and that is also possible write all the option join to so right now is showing the hidden file also so today i show you uh, the command presentation file with a what file okay thank you so this is the command ls command this is actually list the file or directory and these are the option actually usable so ls is the command listing the file and directory in your present location suppose i am going etc and put ls so it show all the file and directory under etc we go to bar ls so it's been all the file and directory but if i add some option it's showing tabular format vba showing in hidden file also and give a is then this size was in byte size but right now it's human readable size human readable means kilobyte megabyte gigabyte pwd we already know about that cd we already know about that now who how many users are currently logging in my system this is the command to figure out that who is the command so right now three user is actually logging 
So this thing is the is, is on the Mehdi. Um, two are logging from the remote terminal using remote protocol like SSH, and one other uh, one login is directly TTY. So PTS means it present it represent it's a remote login and TTY represent it's direct login. Direct login means login directly to the console. Another command is uptime, it's showing the uptime information about this server. So currently three user login. Um, it's up for the 29 minute. This is the time from the start. Then log name. It's my user. Right now I am become a root, but I log this terminal with the user maybe. That's why it show the log name maybe. But right now I. I become root is the sudo su command. ID represent the user information. Uh, this is actually right now this user uh, is this terminal. This is root user, user ID of root user zero, group ID also root user zero. Uh, groups command showing a user member of how many groups suppose uh, i want to show how many group joined by the user maybe maybe right now member of the two groups one is maybe another one is will then the last command uh, this command actually show you how many user logged in this system and how many times it's reboot. So from the beginning, it's three time I reboot this server and four time login by the user maybe. This is the history and last B actually the boot log. And last log actually show the. Uh, sorry for interruption. We have already five thirty three. We have to conclude the session and have to attend in uh, assessment session. Okay. I'm also uh, very close to you. So unem is a command show the information about the kernel uh, with option A. This is show the kernel version. This is Linux kernel and version 5.14. And if you want to show the which operating system you install, then it is see. Maybe this version is not included. And to see the information about the time, the command is time date CTL. So we show the local time, uh, universal time, uh, in TP, in or not. And to see the calendar, we have to put the command cal. And on to see date, only date command to the date. And if you want to the calendar of the month, I already discussed about the which command and LSCPI that is actually LSCPU provide the information about your CPU, LS, ESB provide the information about the ESD. Right now, I don't have any connected ESD. Zip, this is actually used to create archive file and decompress, decompress. 
man command actually provide the idea about the any command suppose man cd this is actually give the manual of cd command same man add user so this is provide the manual and all the features option for the add user command and to connect with other system this is the ssh i already use it and you all of all of you are show, showing info if config already i told about it this this command actually show the ip address information network card information and trip command actually use for filter suppose i want to see something suppose uh trip Mehdi bar log misses. So I want to see. Sorry, I mistake type in cube. So nothing found in bar log misses with So this is the log about Mehdi in Barlog message. This is the common log file of this system. So Mehdi <coughs> execute SU command two time. This is also log. Oh, this command actually. Which operating system version I want I use now? Alma Linux. And for the install software, this command is uh, dnf install software name. Suppose I want to install web server Apache. Then I put command HTTP. This is the software name of Apache. Then it's going to install the Apache web server in this system. Okay, that's it. Now uh, you have some assessment for the today's class. Uh, okay, thank you very much, pa Mehdi, for your uh, practical oriented uh, session. Uh, I think Faisal, our uh, uh, officer Faisal, already uh, sent the assessment link. You can check and submit the assessment within uh, 6 p.m. Uh, so I think uh, so far no question. Uh, Mehdi, I think you can leave now.